hello there and welcome to episode 14 of the podcast jump into success okay let's get going Okay, here we are, episode 14, would you believe, episode 14 already, and those of you who are eagle-eyed, or perhaps I should say eagle-eared, will have noticed that we've dropped the seasons. Uh, so originally when we started doing this, we thought we would do seasons uh, and have so many episodes in a season, but uh, it's taken off so well we've decided just to carry on doing it, and hopefully we won't miss any weeks out, uh, we'll do our best not to. But we're just going to go with the the episodes from here on in. So this is episode 14. So what have I got for you today? Well, first off, if I sound a bit different, it's because I've got this really, really horrible cold. It really wiped me out over the weekend. Um, I can kind of speak now, but I'm still coughing a lot. So I'm going to try and not cough too much on the recording and edit out where I do uh, when I do the post-production stuff. But, uh, But anyway, I'm surviving. And it's just one of those things. The weather's changed. Well, well into the autumn now. The summer really did end very, very suddenly. It was uh, pretty sudden. Uh, I'm looking out the window now and it's dark. It's pouring rain again. And I know there have been some floods up and down the country. So if you've been affected by that, I hope you're okay. And that you can get everything mopped up and back to, to full speed and working order very, very quickly. So uh, my heart goes out to you because I know how horrible that can be. But anyway, uh, here we are, episode 14, and i got a quick announcement. So the Be Inspired group is back up and running to full power, and our first live event will be on Thursday, that's the 26th, depending on what day you're listening to this recording. And if you don't know what the Be Inspired group is, you can want to go onto our website and check it out. It's uh, completely free to join, and you get daily, weekly, and monthly uh, personal development content. So every day you get an inspirational quote into your inbox. Every Monday, you get a self-coaching video uh, in your inbox. And uh, once a month, usually at the end of the month, we have a live event, again online, of course, uh, where we have some great content. Uh, Usually, we have a guest. uh, We do a little giveaway uh, at the end. So if you're interested in that, jump on our website, ukcpd.co.uk. Click on Be Inspired Group. uh, Have a look at what's on offer and feel free to join. Uh, It's pretty good. And the feedback we get is, is excellent. So for, for this week's podcast, though, moving on, um, we I interviewed uh, this chap, a gentleman rather, uh, I think it was last week, uh, James Bryant. Uh, really, really, really interesting uh, uh, personal story as well as a professional story. So James is a high performance coach and a well-being, career and well-being uh, coach. And he's doing some really, really interesting work. But it's also part of his backstory is quite interesting. So I I think you're really going to enjoy this. So uh, let me just, without any further ado, introduce uh, James to you. And I hope you enjoy uh, this. I know I really enjoy speaking to him. He's doing amazing work. And we'll put his contact details in in the uh, the show notes. And if you'd like to reach out to him, be sure to do so, because he really is a great guy. Enjoy the show. Okay, so hi James, it's really really great to uh, have you on to today's podcast. Um, uh, we sort of connected on LinkedIn, and I thought we were doing work wise, uh, coaching and supporting individuals through, I guess sometimes difficult things that they go through uh, in life. And I thought, you know, listeners would really really be interested in hearing your story, more about what you do, and maybe a little bit of background as well. So I guess I'm going to start off with that, if that's all right. Tell us a little about you. And maybe a bit of your background. Yeah, just who is James? Tell us all about that. Absolutely. Well, firstly, thank you for having me on the podcast. It's very nice to be uh, invited. Um, so, yeah, as you say, Tony, you and I met on LinkedIn. I think you came across my profile. I am a recent coach on started my business on my recently last year called The Mindful Gent. Uh, however, I my trade is I am a chartered surveyor. So I did 10 years as a chartered surveyor working for a global um, property organization. Um, And I really enjoyed it. However, I have epilepsy and as part of my epilepsy and my, um, my health, I suffered 
some depression and anxiety along with the medication that I take. Yeah. And towards the end of my career within the property world, I figured that actually this is this wasn't sustainable for me to continue with. There was a lot of traveling. I had a lot of meetings, a lot of time spent on the train. Um, and I knew deep down that the industry and the people that I were meeting wasn't going to be for me forever okay so i undernard for a while about what to do next i didn't actually know what to do next and it wasn't until i found a coach a life coach and it took me to cut a long story short it took me around 18 months from when i was a chartered surveyor to actually leave the company right. that I was in it took that long because I was I was there as a graduate I there through my professional qualifications that took me four years I was there through you know going kind of up the hierarchy with um, work and I did really enjoy it but there were things that held me back within the property industry that we can talk about um that I isn't kind of that are kind of against my own values and yeah, yeah. um I'm very pleased that I was able, with the help of my coach, who I have, I still have to this day, um, was enabled to get me out of the situation. And I developed a, um, I, I developed kind of the new era of James. And it wasn't until I had a period of time off work, so I had a year off, and. I realized that I wanted to work for a something that was close to my heart, which was men's mental health. Um, yeah. And I was introduced through my previous work, um, a company called Mind Up, who I am a coach currently on the platform for. I'm their high performance career and well-being coach. Um, and I worked for the founder there when there was only three of us. This was two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, and I worked for him for 18 months and that just changed my life. I didn't know the ins and outs of mental health, well-being, and how much this can change people's lives, coaching, yeah. counseling. And it was a world which I'd never understood before. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. That's what I'm in now. Brilliant. So if I was to sort of put it in this way then, so you were, you were in your professional life. Yes. Um, it had its ups and downs. You sort of thought, yeah, it's okay. But there was a but. And so taking some time back and working with a coach, you were able to figure out what was really important to you. And then this kind of new career in, in the coaching industry. Yeah, I mean, and I think a lot of people go through this process this this uh, period in their life where actually what they thought they was what were meant to do or what yeah family or friends kind of think they should keyword be doing in their life yeah, yeah. is actually not what they want to do yeah, and good the ones I was, are very different absolutely i was very lucky enough to go to private school and i felt like i should be doing this I top job, earning lots of yeah. money, giving back to my parents, etc. But actually, it, well, in, in whatever way that I could, not in terms of financial reasons, but to show that my education was worthwhile. And I yeah. thought that by working for this company, for this brand, that it was going to help do that for all of us, and particularly me to kind of give back to them, to show them that. But it was only making it worse. Um, yeah. And... Another factor of my life, um, I came out uh, late in my 20s um, as gay and within the property industry, I didn't feel like I could be my true authentic self. And now I, I really enjoy coaching people that want to be their true authentic self and they're finding yeah. it difficult for whatever reason that they can't yeah. be. Yeah, interesting. Very good. Very good. So, so you're working for this? Was it Mind Up? You said. Yes, Mind Up. M Y N D U P. I um, 
it's it's an employee benefit um, uh, virtual wellness mental health platform. So, oh, I see, um, right. yeah. you, so organizations have, engage this organization. As yes, there's a benefit of, of companies to then uh, what happens is you go onto the platform, you choose any coach that you like. Uh, everything is confidential; it's private, um, and you how you, you however you can do this privately so anyone can go onto the mind up uh, platform but they what's different to mind up is that they have an array of uh, practitioners it's not just coaches it's not just counselors there is yeah. from every all over the spectrum because we know that everybody is different and yeah. it's nice for someone to choose their practitioner and be able to have this um have this ability to say actually i've tried this i've tried that and actually this is what works for me a lot and of get other to people, a sense of control if they're making the choice as well they're making their own choice and this is very important yeah. when you're deciding what's right for you we know that a lot of companies and if you go to bupa or if you go to you know big name insurance firms if you're uh, an employee or if you go to for example the nhs then they distribute your counselor or your therapist or your coach for you you don't or if it is you don't get much of a choice it will be between one or two people and yeah. then they will only give you a certain amount so it's it's very different but yeah. um i love the platform i love my clients my clients are through all over the world um, and from different ages, different sexes, different genders, different um, professions, ranging from career, you know, super high performance CEOs, entrepreneurs, graduates, and to, you know, relationship issues, and all the way through the spectrum. It's it's amazing. I, okay, I great. absolutely love it. Okay, great. So then you obviously then trained as a coach yourself. I am a trained coach, yes. So within uh, the period of leaving uh, the, my property organization, which I worked for previously, my professional role, I thought I, I, I've always, I'm, I coached the graduates when after I was qualified. And I thought, yeah. I just fancy doing something whilst I'm off. So I um, enrolled in the coaching academy to uh, performance uh, coaching a degree diploma and uh, it took me just over 18 months to get that uh, and I specialize in um, a couple of things specifically uh, anxiety stress um, related to professional roles so I don't I'm not a therapist I'm not a counselor I'm a coach I'm looking at things going forwards in your life and what, sure, yeah. what's happening today and going things going forwards in your life so career development, part, road path, setting out goals, all of those sort of stuff um, with, with, with men, with women, and everybody in between. Yeah, great. So one of the questions we always ask somebody who's come from a coaching background or indeed an NLP practitioner, you know, what's your favorite coaching model? Because a lot of our listeners, and certainly on the Be Inspired group, they're all of that ilk uh, and have been trained or are training. But we always ask what your favorite sort of coaching model is. It's a great question. I think because there are so many, it's really yeah. difficult to answer that. And I think the model you use to, is the to, to changes on the person that you're with. Sure. And I think course. it's a, I, I think it's a very adaptable approach if you have this. But there are some foundations in coaching that you, um, that as coaches we, you know we have to adhere by and we have to, it's kind of it's just the basis and the foundations as i said that you want to set firsthand but then you can build on that and you can divert from that which is why it's such an amazing um role and i think the relationship between coach and client is having a coach my having been coached myself for eight or nine years it's very different with everybody. Yeah, and of course. I think 
the adaptability of all of those different frameworks and I, I don't need to mention them because I'm, I'm sure everyone listening knows that but they they're out there for you to sprinkle adapt and really get stuck into if that person is willing to to do that all dependent yeah. on the client um and and how they wish to go forward yeah brilliant so you mentioned about mind up but then you also mentioned about the mindful gent so is that your personal brand that you you operate out of as well yeah no i'm doing a good plug for mind up um well, i don't i are. don't work for them <laughs> I don't work for them. I'm, we'll a, I'm, them a, an invoice. <laughs> yes, I'm a consultant for them. So um, the mindful, I created the mindful gent. Um, so um, this I will plug. Uh, so um, it's www.themindfulgent.com. And I created the mindful gent because I live in central London. And I'm not just talking about London. I know there's a, I know there's a big spoof around the city, but cities all over the world all over the uk um i know that there are men my age so 35 and above that feel stuck they feel yeah. out of sync they feel alone they feel lost they feel helpless and sometimes if you're not if you're not into sport or you don't you're a bit fed up with watching the football or whatever and you don't want to go to the pub there isn't huge amounts for men of 35 and above to be involved with unless you're you know really enjoy sport to the gym or whatever there isn't lots of other activities for example on the other hand women have a lot of activities that they do with each other that they enjoy so you know anything from cake making cooking jewelry and um, knitting and all these other things that men necessarily don't do because there is a stigma against doing them in groups yeah i wanted yeah. to introduce something to be like I don't care about that stigma. My friends, yeah. some of them straight, some of them gay, they don't care about that. I want to yeah. create an open, safe space where you can come, be yourself, meet new people, and just do an activity and see how you feel and hopefully increase your mental health, increase your yeah. your, your your feeling of, um, you know, and overcome your your worries. Yeah. So on this mindful gen thing, it's like a platform where people can get together and then there's in real in you know real space where they actually get together in the in the real Yeah, world. it's a community. I'm trying I'm I'm trying to create a community where men feel safe and we can do things, as I said, like go on walks, go camping, yeah. go on hikes, go out for dinner. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but I want to provide that space and though the groups on a Tuesday night after work, on a Friday night, instead of going to the pub and drinking pints yeah. or watching sport, giving another avenue yeah. to yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah, great. And is there like a like, coaching element in that as well? Is there a what, sorry? A coaching element to that as well? Yes, of course. So I, during the um, the activity, say if we were cooking, if we were walking, if we were hiking, then I will stop certain times throughout the session and yeah. provide a mindfulness um, a mindfulness experience. So I would do it either for a couple of minutes before, during and after, or I'll do it throughout, just depending on the activity. As you can imagine, it can be slightly different with yeah. uh, on the activity. But I will um, introduce and um in and it doesn't matter what level you are we can start very basic um but because i don't think people know i don't think men know the power of being mindful and it's and it can it, it can be a game changer sure sure and I, I noticed on the on the website something about yorkshire puddings what's that all about so for the launch of um the mindful gen i 
I wanted to all of my mates that came for the launch to make Yorkshire puddings. Now I've got some really good mates that can cook and I've got some really good mates that are absolutely awful at cooking. So I thought, what can I make that's basic enough for everybody to be able to make a Yorkshire pudding, right? Yeah. So I spoke to my mum, I spoke to my dad, and because my dad can't cook and my mum's a cook. So we all three of us practiced and had a go at making Yorkshire pudding. It was a mess. It was chaos. But <laughs> it was very, very fun. And when I did it with my dad and I did it with the boys on the launch day, I think they all realized actually that it doesn't matter what you do, what the activity is. Yeah. I, bur I burnt some of them. We were laughing about some of them weren't cooked. I actually batched uh, a load of sausages and we had um, toad in the hole. So everyone had lunch afterwards. So we actually used the ones that we, that we could use. So we did none, none went to waste, but um, the point was that the boys realized that actually you don't need to be, watching football or drinking beer and I, and I have nothing against football at all not to actually like football but it doesn't have to be all the time and you no. you can take moments out of your life to meet other people that might be going through divorce i've got I've got a friend that's going through divorce i've got a friend that's going through he, he's really struggling um he's been laid off recently one friend that's going through retirement they're just finding themselves and it, and you know life happens so it's really nice to get a group guy, a group of guys together and do some, you know, just some silly things. Yeah. And you're right. Life does happen. And if you're not sometimes taking that deliberate decision to take a little bit of time back, step back and engage yeah. a real human, get away from the screens, the football and the pub environment. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's probably very, very important. And especially if you're at a point in life where you're thinking, crikey, where am I going? What's going on? Yeah, we, I, the, the group is for all men. And as I said, I, I'm, and I mentioned, I, I am a gay, a proud gay man. Um, I feel like when my straight friends come and there is a group of gay men within the, within the, um, uh, the activity, say, well, whatever we were doing, yeah. I've noticed that, um, and straight my straight friends have told me that they feel relaxed around gay men because yeah. they feel yeah. like they they don't need to be this kind of they don't need to, they've got nothing to prove, yeah, and they don't need to, you know, they don't need to be this masculine over the top you know almost top macho in. man that, of yeah. stigma that we all think a man should be who knows what that yeah. is anymore is it we're 2024 yeah. and frankly yeah. uh, hopefully i mean i don't surround people that care about what the description of that is but they feel more relaxed and i feel feel like they're able to share stuff more yeah even what i want to provide tony with by doing the mindful gen and in any coaching session that I do is some value. I just yeah. want to, I just want that person to take, even if they take one thing home with them, that's of value. Yeah. I am so pleased yeah. because they've come here. They've, they've given up their time and they've opened their hearts and I really respect people to do that because it doesn't, it's, it's really difficult even to come outside of your comfort zone and step inside someone's house, step inside, sure. inside of a team of guys you, you, you don't know. That's really difficult now to do that, yeah. to be, you think you're going to be judged. You know, you're not sure if you're going to fit in. You're, yeah. You might have preconceived ideas about what the group's going to be like. Hopefully we create an not. A, an environment where there is none of that and I just want the person coming along if they take home one thing of value from what I've done either mindfulness or they've made them they've made a new friend that they can share work tips with whatever it is yeah. that's that's the goal for me well I guess if they, once they've stepped into that space and they realize actually <clears throat> this is good and I'm getting something out of it even if, as you say one small thing 
it increases their self-confidence to go back another time or to engage uh, in other type of activities that are not. Because when you get on the pub, it is kind of like a disguise. You're in a certain way, you dress a certain way, there's loud music more often than not, you're drinking, there's probably some you know, telly on as well as a lot of distraction. It, you're not really yourself. I think if you step into a more uh, you know, managed, safe space, you are able to kind of go, well, actually, these, this is what's going on for me. So I can imagine that's a very powerful and um, almost empowering place to be. But I'm guessing that first step into to, to your event is probably a bit scary. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I have, I have um, guys messaging me saying, I really want to come. I'm trying to bring up, build up the courage to come. Is there anything yeah, that you yeah. can say? Or do to, and I, I say, just come when you're ready. You know, there's no rush. There, I'm not. I'm. There's certainly going to be no force from me. Come when you're ready, and you need to do things when you're ready. Sometimes you do need to be um, coached into a, a little bit because everybody yeah. needs. Everybody needs that now and again. Yeah. You know, go on, come along. When you get here, it's never as bad as when you think it is. But it's yeah. that. It's that feeling of being judged if you're especially if you're going through things at the moment and if it's work related, if it's work relationship related, if it's personal and you just don't want to be on your own, if you feel stuck, if you feel alone, then if you can get one thing out of being it's something also being in a group and having uh, some like chat amongst men. And it's mm. outside of the chat, of the pub chat and the sport chat. Mm. So it's chatting about feelings, dare I say it. And it's chatting yeah. about, you know, you know I'm, ret I'm retired and I'm golfing, but I'm just not enjoying it. And, you know, yeah. that sort of stuff. Or many, many scenarios that we've, I've spoken yeah. about. But it... It's, I think it's really empowering for people that come on, come along yeah. to the sessions. Um, well, I think yeah. most people are familiar that the or are aware of the the suicide rate between young men um, is just hideous and horrific, um, and I think even this current government have realised that you know there's a lot of healthcare provision for women, but often there isn't for men, or men have that sort of thing they don't need to look after themselves because it kind of shows weakness. So I think what you're doing is probably really, really powerful and probably very necessary. Um, so, you know, I want to say well done on, on what you're doing there, because it does sound like you're really doing something that will make a big, big, big difference to the chaps who step over the threshold uh, and engage in the, in the process. That's really kind of you to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you, you really hit you, you really you brought up something which is very touchy at the moment. Um, we've seen a real increase in young boys, young men um, mm. that unfortunately have taken their own lives at such a, uh, you know, such a precious time in their age. Uh, and, 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 and we don't know exactly what's going on with them at the time. But if there are more avenues in which they can just speak to someone for yeah. free, because you know therapy and counseling and coaching is expensive and you know i've always said to someone any of the guys that that come along to the activities i'm more than happy to have a chat with you for you know yeah, i'm not yeah. going to be, I've, i'm not going to be charging loads of money just on the first go that's it's yeah. insane that's not how you build up a business and right. i think it's really important that you that um people that are um, building up their own business or starting up on their own um, just reach out and to say that they are able to help people when they when they can because we know it's yeah. expensive to do it yeah brilliant well look um, this has been great so I'm gonna ask you one last question and I know as coaches we tend not to give advice and it's sort of allergic to the idea of giving advice to the but if, if somebody was listening to this podcast right now and they were at that sort of point in life or that sort of stuck state or maybe a bit of anxiety about where they're going in life or feeling a bit of, you know, that kind of, oh God, I'm on the hamster wheel, I'm not sure. What bit of advice would you give them? Yeah. 
amazing crash here. Um, so I've been there, first of all. <laughs> Yeah. I was that guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been there. Um, it's very difficult. I think the thing to do is to really take some time on your own to, to figure out what it is that you want yourself. Nobody else, no boyfriend, no girlfriend, no mom, no father, no other person. What it is that you would like get that straight what it is that you want to change if something isn't right in your life mm. and maybe write down a couple of things that you think you are really really good at and really strong at like kind of your your, your pros and then maybe write so say, say 10 things and then write 10 things that you would like to improve on yeah and this you you it's really strange when you can visually look at stuff it really change things that you'll you'll start brainstorming you'll start thinking if i could change my work if i could change my relationship is it my home setting is it where i'm living is it the tra traveling to work is that's what it's stressing me out is it money is it financial reasons it, it can really release a lot of things that you're holding in the other thing yeah. to do is to speak to someone that you trust. Yeah. This is, you know, I, as we've just said, there are professionals like myself who you can speak to, who you can pay for, who are, you, you, you know, um, and you will get that from. However, speak to a friend, speak to a colleague, speak to your manager, speak to someone that you just feel like you can trust that yep. is golden and say to them that i'm not a hundred percent i'm i'm needing some direction i just want to chat yeah and get it off your chest it works wonders the third thing oh my gosh the third thing i have three things get yourself outside get yourself outside Go for a walk, go for the park, get get the dog, get the cat, get the budgie, whatever you've got, get your get your child, get some fresh air, go for a walk, you know, try and practice some just self believe in some mindfulness. I've got some really small tips on the website. Get in touch with me, get in touch with someone that you 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 trust in order to help you get past this take some take a friend on walk with you and just have a chat but yeah. get outside see some blue sky see some sun you know see some grass get your take your socks off stand on the floor try and feel the earth between your feet i mean i'm not saying to touch a tree and be a tree hugger but you can get some, <laughs> you can great get some great energy if you're in the park from a tree sit by it take your book yeah it it those three things start off with those three things and see how you get on brilliant fantastic uh, and i endorse all of what you said that they, they all sound like very very good ideas and simple strategies that anybody can pretty much do uh, without yeah. breaking the bank well james this has been brilliant i really really appreciate your time and i know uh, we'll we'll put the link to your website uh, on on the uh, the episode details when we publish it and uh, maybe we'll have you back again in the future when you, your whole sort of thing has developed even more so and you've got big 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 events and you can be able to <laughs> well i hope so i mean it's, it's it's when you first start your business it can be slow so i'm just i'm out there for anyone who wants to reach out to me i'm more than happy to have a chat please do so thank you so much for having me on today i really really appreciate you giving me a chance thank you so much absolute pleasure it's been brilliant Okie dokie. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so there you go. Um, the G interview we did with James Bryant. And I have to say, listening back to it again, really, really great content. Uh, great guy, really doing some really, really good work. And uh, we really appreciate his time uh, on the podcast. Let me know what you, you think. Uh, we love getting all the feedback. And thanks again to all of those who have sent in feedback. Uh, we really do appreciate it. 
And actually, one other thing, if there's a particular subject area you'd like us to cover around personal or indeed professional development, do let us know. Uh, if we can fit it in, we will. Or if we can uh, you know, get somebody to, to interview the, on that subject matter, uh, we'll do that as well. So uh, be sure to subscribe. We've got lots more coming up in the coming weeks and months. And uh, till I see you next time or hear from you next time, take care of yourselves and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,